Let's talk about the darkest house and specifically converting your character to the native system that is within the darkest house, which we call, of course, the house system. Now, this system is intentionally very uh, fast and easy and straightforward so that it doesn't get in the way at all of the mood and the atmosphere and the really creepy, maybe even disturbing stories that you're going to tell as you enter the house. And and it's not going to get away from the, get in the way of the character development that you're going to have as your character uh, uh, interacts with these experiences that are going to happen. So uh, let's just take a couple of examples and we'll, we'll use a couple of different systems. And I think that it's probably the best way to really uh, uh, see how the conversion system works and see how quickly and easily it is uh, accomplished by, by, by just giving you some examples. Let's start with 5e, right? Um, a lot of people are, are playing it's you know, by far the most popular game out there. Um, many of you are probably going to convert your 5e character to the house system. Let's take like a super typical dwarf. We'll call him Arduk. Uh, he's a dwarf fighter. He's got big war hammer, magical war hammer. And uh, he wears plate armor. And he's, you know, like... Like you would expect, he's got a really high constitution, lots of hit points. Uh, he's a tough dude. So uh, we start with his level and we take a look at that. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, Arduk at fifth level to basically the scope of 5e characters. And basically that scope means, it, it just simply means... Uh, you know, you go from first level to 20th level. You know, the, the most powerful character is going to be 20th, and he's fifth. And so the system will give you uh, basically a conversion system that shows that a fifth level character, or you know, someone that is rated five on a scale of one to 20, becomes a rating three character as our baseline. And that's because in the house system, what we're basically doing is we're rating things on, on a scale of 1 to 10. He's a baseline rating 3 at level 5. Now, uh, there's some modifications based on that, right? Because we want Arduk to feel like Arduk. We, he, we, you know, we want him to keep his same sort of essence. So, like I mentioned, he's got a really high constitution, lots of hit points. We're going to rate him as being rating 4 for resisting wounds. So he's better at that than he is at other things. However, not surprisingly, Arduk's dexterity and charisma, and they kind of suck. So we're going to say he's only rating two when it comes to things like nimble hands or, or acrobatics or, you know, interacting with people. Now, uh, you know, he's got uh, some skills which might come into play you know, and so uh, he's good at perception and athletics so we'll make him rating four in those as well um, and then he's got some inconsequential stuff we don't really care about like you know the fact that he's got like crafting skills or anything that's not going to come into play in the darkest house so we're not even going to worry about it uh, that can figure into the way that the player plays the character but it, it doesn't matter mechanically and he's uh, he's got some things that some special abilities uh, that give him bonuses to his armor class. He's got some special kind of combat maneuvers. Um, again, if you're a fifth edition player, you know exactly the kind of stuff he's got. He's as typical as you can imagine. Um, but what we're gonna do is rather than uh, uh, make those all individual things, we're gonna just give him a flat out bonus. Uh, uh, to his rating in terms of attacks and defense. So he's rating four for all attacks and all defense actions, uh, which which makes him really great. And even better than that, remember um, he's got a sh he's got a shield, uh, which is going to give him a boon for defenses. And remember, I said that his warhammer was magical, so give him a boon on all of his attacks with that warhammer too. And just as a refresher, remember that that means that when he rolls 2d6 for those actions, he's actually going to be rolling 3d6 and taking the highest uh, two dice, and that's both attacks and defense. So he's he's really tough. Oh, and that's right, we said he wore plate armor too, so... Um, we're going to say that, uh, 
you know, because plate armor really, uh, you know, uh, protects them a lot. It's like the best armor that you can get uh, in the system. So that's going to add another two to his rating for resisting wounds. So in sort of summary, Arduk's rating three. He's rating two for anything involving dexterity or charm. Uh, but he's rating four for perception, athletics, attacks, and defense. And both attacks and defense have a have a boon. And he's rating six for resisting damage. That's Arduk done. That's that's all the information that we need to have him go into the darkest house. Uh, very simple, straightforward. Uh, it's just a few a few ratings. Um, you know, you'll you'll jot those down uh, on the character sheet. Uh, and, and that's basically all we need to know. Um, let's take a different example. Let's, let's use a different, uh, uh, system. Let's, let's go with the cipher system. You know, I'm biased. Uh, so in the cipher system, characters have a sentence which describes them. Um, let's, let's, uh, take, uh, Taka. Taka is a swift explorer who works miracles. Uh, basically that pretty much means that she's, you know, very fast, she's very capable, um, and she can heal people through with, with, you know, we, we call them miracles. And so, uh, Taka is tier two, and in the cipher system, there are six different tiers. And so right off the bat, we look at the, uh, the column of, of conversion for the different kinds of ratings, right? And remember, remember uh, uh, Arduk was, we looked at a scale of 1 to 20. Now we're looking at the, at, a, at the same chart. It's a column rated for 1 to 6. And we see that as a two, tier 2 character, she is either a rating 2 or 3. And we're going to we're going to start with two. Um, and so uh, she's has a baseline of of one rating less than Arduk. But that's OK, because let's keep going. Remember, there were modifications with him. They're going to be modifications with her as well. Now, um, we we take a look at at her uh, ability scores and they're mostly normal they're they're neither extremely high or low so we're gonna ignore those but she's swift remember and that gives her a bonus to initiative and and some running abilities um so we'll give her a rating of three that of, with anything that has to do with speed further she's an explorer and that is given her training in swimming and climbing so we'll give her a rating of three of both of those things um, she's also skilled in geography, but frankly, it's never going to come up inside the house, so we don't care. Um, and, uh, she's got some special abilities that make her better at combat, both defense and offense. And just like with Arduk, rather than getting all involved in what that means, we're just going to lump them together and say that she's a rating three for attacks and defense. She also wears light armor. So that's going to add one to her rating for resisting damage. So she's rating three in that as well. Now she's got the special ability of being able to heal people. And, um, you know, it's got its own mechanics, but the house system also has its own mechanics for healing. So uh, what we're going to do is... Um, take a look at how that would translate. Now, in the house system... Wounds have ratings. Everything has a rating in the house system. Again, on a scale of 1 to 10. So uh, we'll say that every time she wants to uh, use her powers to take away a wound or an unwanted effect on a creature, uh, she can try an action to get rid of that wound, right? And so like with anything in the house system, she's going to be taking her rating adding that to her die roll and subtracting the rating of the task. In this case, it will be the rating of the wound. And so uh, she will uh, make that roll, see if she can heal that particular wound on one of her friends and uh, it will, it'll, it'll work or it won't. 
Now, you know, in the cipher system, uh, she's, you know, this would cost her some intellect points and stuff, but we're not really converting that. So um, we'll just say that she can try to use her power once per wound. Um, and, you know, if she, if she fails, then it'll have to be healed in some other way. That's a nice manageable limit on it, and we don't have to worry about tracking any kind of points or anything like that. Um, in, with a character with perhaps more uh, complicated uh, or involved powers, you know, like if you're bringing in your 5e sorcerer, what you'll do is you'll bring them in, bring in the, the special abilities just, just whole cloth. Um, so your sorcerer would still have, uh, you'd still have spell slots and your spells. And, you know, uh, again, there might be a couple of spells that we would have to kind of look at and see, you know, if it's an attack spell, we would treat it just like an attack does uh, in the normal house system. But, you know, if it's something like levitate, Levitate doesn't need conversion. Levitate is you just levitate. Uh, you just move up in the air. Um, and, you know, the duration is is whatever it would have been under 5e. So, uh, you know, but to get back to Taka, um, you know, uh, so she's um, rating two baseline, but she's a rating three for swimming and climbing, swiftness, attacks, and defense. She can heal and remove unwanted conditions. That's basically all we need to know for uh, the house system. Now, because she's a cipher character, she's got a couple of ciphers, a couple of special items. Um, these will translate basically as is. She's got, you know, a cipher that allows her to see through solid matter. So that works just the same as it would in the house as it would anywhere else. She's got uh, another thing that basically creates an area of reduced friction. So it makes it really slippery. Uh, again, that that that's just going to work the way it it does in Cipher, in in that it just works narratively, right? So um, that's uh, that's two different examples of how the house system conversion works. Uh, you can see that it goes really fast. Uh, we've converted two characters here in a 12-minute video, plus with uh, some long-winded explanations from me. So that's that's the conversion system um there are uh basically the basically you'll find the the uh system is very simple it'll handle any sort of system as long as you can kind of rate someone from um you know one end of the spectrum to the other and even if you can't even if you're even if the system you're coming from doesn't have any kind of rating or advancement at all it'll tell you how to do that too so that's conversion. It's really simple. Um, and so, you know, get in there and, and explore the darkest house. And good luck in there.